morning, good morning, good morning to everybody out there in Amazon land. Welcome to Ryan's Remote Work Hangout for December 28th, 2022. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm Ryan. I talk a lot about remote work gear, things like desks, chairs, monitors, keyboards, printers, paper shredders, a lot of things that are just important to remote workers. Sorry, I am much, much later than usually this morning, but here's the deal, and more of this story will come up. The Bluetooth on my computer appears to have gone out, and it led me to some issues because I could not connect my keyboards to my computer, and I thought there was something wrong with my keyboard, so then I was troubleshooting that. Then I realized it wasn't just my keyboards because nothing Bluetooth could connect to my computer. And so I was running into a bunch of problems there. So that all leads to my question of the day here, which is, <laughs> do you have tips for fixing my Bluetooth? That, that's my question. Let me copy and paste that out there. Anyhow, what I had to, to do, uh, all my MX keyboards, I all have them set up working over Bluetooth, and I couldn't get any of that to work. So I am on to the Logitech MK270 for the win today. There you go. I know the other ones have dongles that I can plug in, but I just couldn't find them right away in the 270 was easier, so I have that plugged in, but it took me a, a little bit longer than usual to get all that stuff figured out and try to figure out what I was gonna do this morning and troubleshoot some things. Tommy is here, Try. Tommy says, uh, greetings Ryan and live shopping community interns. How are things in Sioux Falls? It's cloudy and 44 here in Kalamazoo. Uh, I have not been, Uh, I am not been outside today. It's 36 here, so it's not too cold here. It is still above freezing. It was a nice day yesterday as well, so we're enjoying that. I do think we might get here in South Dakota, we might get some rain or possibly snow later in the day if the temperature drops a little bit. But uh, my big thing today is I need to figure out the Bluetooth issues on my computer and what I'm going to do with that. I don't know if I'm going to end up needing a new mini PC. That would be rather unfortunate because this one is not that old. But the only thing wrong with this one is that the Bluetooth doesn't work. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do or how I'm going to work and rearrange this. But uh, yes, I need, need to look into that just a little bit more uh, so hopefully after the show or later this afternoon i will have some time to do that and i'll have to dive in and figure out what i have going on there anyhow whew, that is a little bit of the morning for today what are we going to talk about on the show today we've got a lot of the usual remote worker type of gear and things here uh, Geniverse, still a proud sponsor of the show right here. This is the Home Power One. It provides a thousand watts of portable power. This one I really like. It comes with a handle so you can easily lift it up and move it around and carry it around with you if and when you need to. So that's the Geniverse Home Power One. Uh, you can get the double bundle, two of these, two solar panels uh, for. Uh, $19.99 is the price on that. Or you can just for $1,299, you can get one of these and two of the solar panels. And these could be helpful. It is winter time. I know a lot of people were out of power last week due to the extreme cold and blizzard that moved across much of the northern part of the country. Uh, so yeah, so that's a little bit more about Geniverse. And there are two other Geniverses. The Home Power One Pro Series 
is back here. Big thing about the Pro Series is it gives you a little bit more watt hours of power. This one over here had a thousand watt hours. The Geniverse Pro Series, this one has 1200, 1200 watt hours of power. But I think the biggest difference of the two is the Pro Series charges in two hours, whereas this one charges in eight hours. So if you need the fast charging, you probably are going to want to go with the Home Power One Pro. The Pro does also have the ability to connect it with an app on your phone and you can remotely control it and turn on and off different ports on the front of it. You can turn uh, charging via the solar panels on and off as well. You can schedule things with the app, which I use that quite frequently. If you really need to go to a lot of power, if you need to go up to more than 1,200 watts at a time, you're going to need to go to the Geniver's Home Power 2, which is right here, and it provides over 2,000 watts of power in it. Here, I got to put this back. It's rather heavy, though. But I'm going to put it back there. Anyhow, so those are the Geniverses. If you need some emergency power or just some power to take with you to locations where power is not easily accessible, you have that out there. All right. Let me see if I can bring up chat over here on Amazon. As I see, I've got some questions out here. All right, let me bring up my chat. Here's what Tommy says for the question of the day. He says, reboot. If it's still a no-go, see if there's an update for the drivers. You can also try turn off Bluetooth, wait a minute, then turn Bluetooth back on. It's still not working. You can remove the device and reconnect. All right, so I tried the reboot a couple of times. I did not try the turn off and wait a while. I did look at some of the drivers. Here was the problem uh, for that last one. It said, if it's still not working, you can remove the device and reconnect. My problem is when I went to reconnect, it didn't find any Bluetooth devices in the vicinity. So I don't think the Bluetooth on my, I don't think the Bluetooth functionality on my mini PC is working because it wouldn't find anything and devices that had previously been Bluetooth connected no longer could Bluetooth connect today like my headsets are connected and they show up in the list it even shows they're connected yeah tommy says my guess is the driver so maybe i'll have to play around with some of those drivers a little bit more after after the show today it was it was kind of a mess i tried a bunch of things and then realized i couldn't get it to work but i wasn't sure how long i wanted to spend on it before I just needed to give up on it and uh, just do my show. So Tommy says, oh, and make sure airplane mode is off. I don't know if I have. I don't think I'd be able to do my show right now if airplane mode was on. That is a good point, though. Anyhow, there's a number of other things I need to try on my Bluetooth to figure it out. There's maybe a button somewhere on one of my keyboards I pressed and it turned off Bluetooth. I, I don't know. More things I need to look into. It was just unfortunate and it kind of threw off my whole morning here. I was a little, I don't know, frazzled, I should say, on those. But thanks for tuning in, everyone. So, Tommy, Tommy, now that the weather is a little bit warmer where you're at, have you been able to get outside and enjoy some of the weather a little bit more? Are you trying to take care of those cats? <laughs> Benjamin says, yo, Ryan, can you give my, I think GF stands for girlfriend, Angelica, a shout out. She's a fan. Well, thank you, Benjamin, for stopping by. Uh, if you're new, Benjamin, I don't know if I recognize your name, but thanks for being here. Say hello to 
uh, Angelica as well. And if you've never been here before, hit the follow button down below. It's either in one of those spots. That goes for Benjamin or anybody else out there. Click that follow button and that'll be nice. So thank you, Benjamin, for doing that. Also, feel free to jump into the chat. Let me know if you happen to have any questions on remote work or gear. I will try my best to help you out. Tommy says, uh, does Bluetooth appear in device manager? In the device manager, there's six or seven things under Bluetooth. And I looked at all of them before the show to see if they had any updates available for the drivers. But sometimes their changes to the operating system make the driver not work. And it may take a few days before the driver gets an update. I don't know if I'd do that. I, I thought I may need to just uh, reset the whole mini PC and maybe that works. I don't know. Uh, Tommy said, yes, he did get outside to enjoy it a little bit and did some grocery shopping. Well, you know, that's a good thing to do once it gets a little bit nicer. It was so cold last week. It was kind of ridiculous how cold it was. It was just Unbelievable to think of how cold it really was last week. It was so cold you could hardly even go outside for anything. But it's a little bit better this week. <laughs> Benjamin said cold, negative uh, 30. So I in Chicago. So Benjamin, I'm located in South Dakota, and yes, the I took a screenshot on my phone yesterday. Let me last week because this was one of the colder times the air temperature was negative 18 and it felt like negative 47 it was unbelievable i tried to go for a walk one of the days i was bundled up had a full scarf like my entire body there was no skin exposed. I even wore ski goggles from my kids to cover my eyes so that they wouldn't get cold. And I remember there was one spot I turned around like at the end of my street, not too far from my house. And there was no, there were like no houses. It was kind of like on the edge of town or there was a big open lot next to it. And the wind came in on me. And in the 200 feet that I was there, it was so cold. I like started to have troubles breathing and I just thought to myself, I thought this is one of those situations where I'm even dressed up and I turned and went home after that. Cause I was like, this is terrible. But I thought this is one of those situations that even if you're fully dressed up when it was that cold, I just, I kept thinking to myself, I was like, I don't know that I'd make it 30 minutes out here. It took me about 30 seconds and I could already tell that I was having troubles breathing and that even inside my coat and stuff, I was starting to get cold. It was crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Benjamin says, yuck. Wow. I thought we had a bed. Anyhow, it's much nicer, much nicer weather this week. We're above freezing yesterday for the first time in a while. And I actually don't mind the below freezing weather, especially if there's snow. So we've got, you know, six, eight, 10 inches of snow on the ground, depending on if it's melted. Some of the drifts are, uh, you know, much taller than that. The big snow piles, we've got, you know, 20 foot snow piles from some of the parking lots around here that have been cleaned up. So it's kind of fun to just have some of the snow around the area. But I'm one of those people, like, if it's going to be cold, at least have some snow. But if it's going to be negative 47, you can't play outside anyway. Uh, but yeah, I think my kids are probably going to go outside a little bit today. Benjamin said, I went outside for two minutes in the negative 30, no face protection. And I was in so much pain. I've always, I've always said, Benjamin, I've said this for a while. When you go outside, I'm like, one of the ways to really know how cold it is, like if you go outside and your teeth hurt because it's like so cold. And when that wind hits your teeth that are just a little bit moist because they're in your mouth, it's really cold. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes... It's just too cold. Uh, Benjamin said, do you have any good recommendations for a portable monitor? I'm working off of a Surface. I actually do, and I don't know if it's in the carousel, but I'll quickly 
add it into the carousel for you. Uh, I have one at my house. It's not in this room because one of my other kiddos has uh, taken it and put it in his room. But here, I'm going to move some things out. Let me see if I can add it in. So for those of you that don't know, a portable monitor, just think it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a monitor that is built. It's about the same size as a laptop. And it folds up, goes nicely into your backpack. I did get it added. I'll go back to the end and highlight it. Uh, this KYY portable monitor, and I wanted to, oftentimes it's got coupon codes associated with it, so I was going to go look at that for you. It's on a pretty good sale at $149. I think that's a great price, but there's a $40 coupon. When it gets under what it used to be, when it got under $150, it was a really good deal, but they, it's been coming down. And when it gets under 130, it's been a really good deal. Right now, with the $40 coupon, it's $109. So if you don't know what a portable monitor is, uh, just think of it like this. So here's a laptop. It is essentially, take this back part of your laptop. That's what you get. Uh, it's what you would expect. It's They are built and designed so that they are the size, this one's 15.6 inches, so it fits in your backpack, you know, the sleeve where you put your laptop in. You can also fit your portable monitor in here. Here's the reason why I like this KYY one. Well, I have one. My son took it and is using it in his room. But the, the stand for it wraps all the way around as a case, which covers the front and back, so that keeps it when you put it in your backpack and stuff. It keeps the screen of your monitor from getting scratched up and the backside of your monitor, uh, the cover covers that as well. So you're not going to scratch your laptop or your monitor while you're putting it in and out of your bag. It works really nice. And then that the stand, the cover doubles as a stand when you open it up. It allows you to stand it up at a couple of different angled positions on it. But it's a KYY portable monitor, 100 49 is the price. Click on the $40 coupon inside that page and you can get it for $109. It's it's fantastic. It connects via USB-C. So if you have a USB-C port available on your, your Microsoft Surface, you can connect it that way. It includes the USB-C cord for this. If you don't have USB-C available, it includes an HDMI cord that goes regular HDMI to what inputs on the, the portable monitor is mini HDMI. I think it's mini. Yeah, I think it's mini HDMI, but it includes the cord for that. It also includes a separate power cord that you could use to plug it in because if you're running your monitor via HDMI, power will not get there. If you run your monitor via USB-C, you only need the one cord just the USB-C because that'll provide the picture and the monitor for it. Uh, Benjamin says, good battery life. It doesn't run. It's it's not battery operated. So if you connect with the USB-C cable, it just pulls power from your laptop. And so obviously that's going to drain your laptop battery a little bit faster, but you don't have to worry about charging your monitor and stuff. And so I tell this, a lot of people when they take these portable monitors, they're great for working in different locations. So you know when you go to a coffee shop or you go to an office and maybe you just have a temporary space for the day in the office, you pull out your laptop and you plug it in. Uh, typically I do. And just because I'm going to be sitting there for a couple hours. And if you have your laptop plugged in and you run the USB-C cable to your monitor, it's just going to power the monitor as well. And so you don't have to worry about charging it up or not. Uh, Benjamin says, I do have USB-C, so that's good, but always good to have another HDMI. Oh, I see. But yeah, those portable monitors are really, really nice. If you work in different places or you travel a lot, having two monitors 
just tons of studies have done productivity on having multiple monitors makes you more productive. I also say this, if you are in any type of sales or client work where you go have meetings with your clients, if you have an extra monitor, a portable monitor, it makes it so nice when you go, you know, you sit across the table from your client uh, and you're trying to do a presentation on your laptop. No longer do you need to set your laptop like off to the side or you need to sit real close to the other person so you can share the screen or you need to turn your laptop. Just to have two monitors, bring up that portable monitor and set the portable monitor right in front of them and they can see what's going on. And it, it just ups your presentation that much better when you're just doing meeting with clients and stuff like that. Bruce started following. Uh, Bruce, thanks for being here. Thanks for clicking that follow button. Let me know if you happen to have any questions on remote work gear. Benjamin, I hope I answered all of your questions about that portable monitor. I can tell you uh, the KYY portable monitor, it's a nice monitor. It does do 1080p. Uh, I hooked it up. Like I've run it off of laptops and it works. My son runs it off. I think his is running off a laptop too. I did run the Nintendo Switch on it for a while. So, I mean, if you want to do something like that, you can. It does only have 60 hertz refresh rate. So it's not really a gaming monitor, but a Nintendo Switch is kind of built to be connected to a TV and they have, they don't, they have, don't have super high refresh rates anyway. So that is what I've done with it. Uh, I would, I can say though, the price on it is really good. The price with the $40 coupon 109, uh, I don't know. I've talked about that monitor a ton of times over the last year and a half, and I don't know that it has ever gone less than that. The price on it has come down the last couple of weeks. As with most all monitors for a while, at the beginning of 2021, there was a lot of monitors. Prices were really good. Then the monitors became out of stock and you couldn't find them as much. There were less monitor options available. It drove the prices up a little bit. In the last four months, monitor prices have started to drop fairly significantly, so you can get good deals on monitors. Uh, anyhow, Benjamin said, thank you. Really thinking about getting it. I do client-facing work, so I need the extra monitor to screen share a little smoother. Yeah, I and they they really are pretty good. So for $109, it, it, it's probably worth it. Plus, when you show up to a client meeting and they've got their own monitor right in front of them, instantly you're going to come off as more well-prepared and more impressive. All right. What did I have to get to next? So that's portable monitors. I'm betting there's some other monitors in my carousel that I should maybe just highlight since we're talking about monitors. Rome knows tech says, hello, everyone. Hello, Rome. Welcome to the show. Rome is another live streamer out here. And Rome, I'm having some troubles with the iPhone app here a little bit. Whew. Oh, all right. Rome's another live streamer. He talks about, uh, well, he's a professional photographer, but he also talks about uh, photography, camera gear, video gear, and audio content creation type of gear. A lot of tech stuff. So if you ever want to know about that stuff, stop and talk to Rome and ask him uh, any of the questions that you might have. He loves to answer your questions. And sometimes you can ask him to show you uh I don't know what it's called. Rome, when he was a kid, he's got this funny thing he does with his face that makes him look like he's a seven-year-old, and then he talks in a funny voice, so it's kind of entertaining. Survival Mike says, good morning. Hope you're doing well and prepared for the new year. Survival Mike is big on that. Uh, fail to prepare means you're prepared to fail. And uh, so I... I thought I was a little bit prepared for the new year around here, but this morning I was really late on getting my show started this morning. And here's the story why, because the Bluetooth on my mini PC stopped working. 
So my keyboards wouldn't connect. My headphone wouldn't connect. I tried a bunch of things and it took me much longer than I expected and I didn't get it solved. Eventually, I just decided to get out the Logitech MK270 keyboard and mouse, plug in the little dongle for that, and it appeared to work. So I, I have some other things I need to troubleshoot and test out, but that's why I have my question of the day down there. Do you have any tips for me for fixing my computer Bluetooth problems? I've tried to turn off Bluetooth, turn on. I haven't left it off for a while. I maybe need to turn it off, restart, then turn it back. Anyhow, I did that. I tried just restarting the computer a couple of times. That didn't work. I went and checked the drivers and they weren't quite there. Uh, <laughs> Survival Mike says, usually if Bluetooth fails, you can take it to the dentist. Well, lucky for you, I think I think I have a dentist. I think I need to go to the dentist either for my myself or for somebody else. And now I'm trying to think. I don't remember if it's this morning or if it's later this week. I actually kind of think it is this morning. Maybe I'll ask my dentist about the Bluetooth issues. He's probably not going to know. Anyhow, the, <laughs> that I think Survival Mike was being uh, sarcastic there, but. And I don't know. I have some things I want to try with my Bluetooth. I just haven't gotten to them yet. So I decided eventually to do my show, but it put me about uh, 30 minutes behind schedule this morning, getting that all ready. Okay. Okay. And I have, I have all these cords hanging off the wall underneath my, my setup. And I've been waiting to put some cord cable on them, but I think I want to move my mini PC. It's a mess on my wall, and now I'm even more worried because if I have to get a different mini PC, it might have some different ports, and it's going to change where the cords and cables go, so I don't know. I'll get it figured out. Anyhow, uh, I do have my AOC 27, not 27, 32-inch monitor hanging up. I love the thing. It's so good, but it does, instead of 1080p, it does 1440, so it's QHD monitor. It, uh, I shoot a lot of my videos in 720 because that's Amazon only allows you to go to seven or to live stream in 720. So a lot of my cameras are just set at 720p. Uh, because my monitor does 1440, I've noticed some of my 720p videos really don't look very good when you've got a monitor like that. So. I maybe I'm going to need to start recording some of my videos at 1080p, which I probably can do because I got plenty of monitors or plenty of video cameras, web cameras around here. Okay. Whew. What a day. What a day. All right. Hey, Tommy. <laughs> Rome says, Ryan, how do you like your new camera, Ryan, the Sony ZV-E10? Rome, I have not even tried to take a picture with it yet. Uh, it's predominantly for my two kids, the one who's going to be taking a college class on photography and the other one who takes a lot of the product photos for me. So I haven't even tried it out yet. <laughs> so I can't even tell you how how much I like it. I'm trying to get my son to take some pictures. Uh, I kind of want, I'm going to make him teach me how to use the thing first because I don't even know. He said there's a lot of buttons on it and they do a lot of things and I don't know what they're all for. So he'll figure it out. But Tommy, I wanted to ask you, Tommy's got the uh, Anchor Ufi HomeVac S11. Uh, do you have the Infinity one, Tommy? And what do you think about the HomeVac? There, how, what do you think about your stick vacuum? Those stick vacuums are great. I actually need to move that UV vacuum probably down into my office because the vacuum that I love so much, my Eureka, I don't think they make it anymore. And it kind of makes me sad because I can't talk about it. Well, I can still talk about it, but you can't buy it on Amazon. 
so it doesn't do me much good to talk about it. I was just going to quick. Yeah, my uh, Eureka NEC222, it's, it's not available anymore. So sad. So sad. Rome says, what did you guys get for Christmas? Or what did you guys get for Christmas you like the most? I showed this one off yesterday, Tom, or yesterday, Rome. Right here. Three and a half pounds of peanut M&Ms right there. That's as good as a gift gets for me. There you go. I I got Swanee Mom a a new phone, and a, she stopped by the show and reminded me that I forgot to get her a Starbucks gift card. So that was uh, rather unfortunate. I felt kind of bad about that one. Uh Rome says he has. Oh, what else? Did I, get? I didn't really get. I didn't really have anything on my wish list because I buy so much stuff all the time throughout the year that there just wasn't a surprising item out there to pick up. Uh, Tommy says, yes, that UV vacuum uh, works well. I use it all the time. Do wish the trigger locked when in use. I can see that. Uh, so the trigger on that UV vac, you have to hold it down to keep vacuuming. And my guess is they built that so that it's probably a battery saver so that when you let off and you're, you know, when you're not using the vacuum, it just automatically turns off and you're not wasting the battery. Because sometimes I know with my other one, I'll be vacuuming and I'll need to move the chair. So I'll just, you know, lean the vacuum up against the wall and go move the chair and the vacuum's on the whole time. So it's draining the battery a little bit faster. Tommy says it holds a charge well, a little slow to charge. So Tommy, did you get the S11 Infinity? Because it's got two batteries with it, which and in my opinion is kind of cool having two batteries. That's kind of a nice thing. Anyhow, maybe more vacuum stuff in the year of 2023. I don't know for sure. I don't want to commit to doing any of that yet. So, <laughs> survival mics, Tommy, quick solution, duct tape. You could put some duct tape on there, but that here's the problem with the duct tape survival mics. Then you can't ever turn the vacuum off. I guess you could just take the battery off out when you're done. <laughs> you're like, my, my vacuum is always on unless I take the battery out. But then you've got an, another problem there. I don't know. <laughs> Tommy said, everyone that has borrowed the Ufi always says it doesn't lock. I could understand that. I could see that. Uh, yes. Hold on. Dano stopped back in. Dano. Oh. <laughs> Tommy says, survival mic, I should have been better prepared. You probably should have. Dano, I, I paused there for a second because I think, Dano, you were asking about gloves a couple of weeks ago because you were looking at a new pair. I did have some <laughs> input on the gloves, but I forgot to put them in the carriage zone. I didn't actually bring them down into the office. Somebody slid me a note under the door. I'll just slide it back under the door. All right. Anyhow, so Dano, watch the show in the coming days, maybe early, maybe tomorrow, maybe early next week. I'll give you kind of a rundown of I bought a couple of different gloves from Amazon. One of them. Goes, says it's warm to negative 30. So they're super, super warm. And those are also waterproof. And then there's another pair that uh, are, you know, not quite built for that. But they're a little bit thinner. 
uh, and they would make some great driving gloves. Uh, Survival Mike said, I would take it apart and add an on-off switch. Yeah, and see, I wouldn't do that. Survival Mike, Survival Mike you could. But I, I'm i not going to try to do that. I'd end up taking it apart and then just going to get a new vacuum. Because I wouldn't be able to get it back together or I'd break it. I don't do that. Uh, but there we go. Now we're talking a little bit about vacuums. Anyhow, I probably need to bring that one down to my office and hang it up down here so that I can demo it and vacuum and clean up my office with that vacuum when I need to. So, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I know there were some good deals on various items today in the carousel. Dano says, nice, the gloves I have are pretty light and not made for really cold weather we had last week. Very few gloves in the world are made for that weather we had last week. It was crazy. Uh, Dano says, I can't stay as I have a meeting at 10 a.m. That is okay, Dano. Thanks for stopping by. Anyhow, good luck at that meeting. Tell all your remote workers that they should come watch my show sometime. Maybe not. I don't know. If you get too many of your coworkers on my call, people would know you're looking for gloves or something. No. Anyhow, good luck with that meeting. Yeah. I don't know. I'll probably be done at probably 1030-ish today because then I got some other things to do, maybe even a little bit before that. Okay, I was going to jump through. It is Wednesday. It's not Wednesday. It's Thursday. <laughs> or they will know I'm watching Amazon Live instead of working. Whoops. Uh, okay. I won't tell them that. You know, I don't know. I have some thoughts about this whole working, watching Amazon Live thing. I don't know. I don't I don't work at your company, don't work for your bosses. But it I don't know. I I am not a big fan of the amount of time that you work is what matters rather than what you get done. I was always a big fan of uh, whether I come in at 7.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. It it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Like I, I worked with this one person who she would, she would come in and she would do her work and she'd get done at like 4 o'clock or something. But... I guess we worked in tech. So like, it wasn't like we were getting phone calls and we had to manage the phones or do something until a specific time. She'd get her work done for the day and then she'd pull out a book and not like a tech book, a novel. And so she'd read for an hour at the end of her day. And I asked her about this one time and I said, why are you just sitting here reading a book? And she said, cause I don't, I can't go till five. And I was, always, I always just thought, well, you can go. If your work is done, just go home. And if all you're going to do is read a book, but somehow the people at the company really thought it was a whole lot better of her to just sit there and read a book. She even turned her computer off and everything. So like she was packed up, ready to go home. She just sat there for an hour and read before she got up and left. So she was done working, but her butt was still in a seat. So that was okay. Uh, Dano says, actually, I'm a good multitasker and t- can do both. And I get that. And you don't always have to interact on my live shows. It's great that you do. And I always appreciate it. But it, it, a lot of times my show, I think for some people is similar to what the radio is for other people. It's just kind of background noise and it's just there. Uh, Tommy says, Rome, is anything new going on with the Sony mirrorless cameras? Maybe Rome will know something about that. I don't know much about that. Anyhow, Wi-Fi stuff. It's Thursday. It's no longer Wi-Fi Wednesday on my show. It's now Wi-Fi Thursday because it's Thursday today, and I put a bunch of Wi-Fi stuff in there. But the Eero 6 Plus mesh Wi-Fi router system, this is a good one. Unfortunately, it is not on sale today. It was on sale 
uh, a little bit over the last week or so. I don't know. Maybe it'll be on a New Year's sale or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but that's a good one. I would say, though, for a lot of people right now, if you're looking for a new Wi-Fi system, uh, the TP-Link AX1800 uh, is normally priced at $99.99. Yesterday, I had it in my carousel, and it was $79.99. So today, they dropped the price even farther to $69. I have the AX3000 at my house, but the AX1800, for a lot of people, would be a really, really good choice, especially if you only have you know four or five people at your household that need it, or maybe it's just you. You don't need a ton of bandwidth. I have the 3,000 because there's seven people at my house and it is not uncommon that, you know, all seven of us are running something on a screen or even multiple screens at the same time. And so I decided to go a little bit higher on my, you know, Wi-Fi router, but I'm happy with it. It's pretty easy to pair it with a couple of these TP-Link AX Wi-Fi extenders. I do have some of those in my house as well. So those work well also to help extend the Wi-Fi into other places. Uh, Rome says, not really much new with the Sony cameras. He has the new Sony FX30 and loving it. I have a new toy in the studio I've been playing with over, over the last few streams. What's Is that the new toy or do you got a different new toy that you've been playing with, Rome? My hot cocoa is fantastic today so if you happen to be looking for some uh wi-fi type of stuff there's some good options there also the netgear unmanaged port is uh on sale today for 21.99 you just need eight wired well you'll get seven wired devices because it's got eight ports one of those ports brings the internet in the other seven ones can take internet to seven other computers and they'll all be wired. Rome says, I got a laser engraving cutter. Well, I was just going to say, what are you doing with that? If I had to guess, you're probably engraving things. What kind of stuff are you making with that, Rome? Does this have a business purpose for you? Know, I guess a photographer, I'm trying to figure out, are you going to start doing photo prints and engraving things onto them? Or is this a totally like separate thing, a hobby, fun activity that you just wanted to try out? I don't know much about laser engraving, but it sounds kind of cool. The Netgear Nighthawk CM1200 cable modem. I do have one of these. You can get a new cable modem for your house if you're currently renting one from your internet service provider. Try to figure out how much it costs, how much you pay every month to rent it. They range from, you know, three or four dollars up to, I've heard as high as $15 a month to rent one of these uh, cable modems. If you're paying three dollars a month, it's probably not worth switching out. If you're paying $15 a month, you might want to buy your own. And just think about this one. Uh, if you're paying $15 a month in a year, uh, in a year, you'll you'll have paid it'll have paid for itself. And then after a year, you'll be saving that $15 every month by doing it yourself. But before you go get a cable modem, check with your internet company. And a lot of the websites for those internet service companies provide a list of supported cable modems that are available. Go check that list and buy a cable modem that is on that list. The CM1200, I think it works with Cox and Xfinity and maybe even a couple other ones. I don't have either of those. I have a local one here in the South Dakota area, and it does work with them. Sometimes the CM1200 doesn't work, and some of your companies go with the Air Surfboard. Uh, what are the full names? The SB8200. Uh, Rome says, I have made a few things so far, mostly fun stuff, things to give away. Well, all right. I don't know when, when you first said laser engraver, I was like, well, maybe Rome is planning to do special prints, uh, on, I don't know, with like a metal canvas or 
a metal picture frame and you're going to engrave things on the frame or something. I don't know. I, I thought maybe that was the case, but I don't, I don't know if people do that. There's just lots of people do lots of different things. <laughs> Rome says, I will test to see if I can print photos with it. That could be kind of cool. And now that I think of it, if you get a big metal, a flat metal sheet, and you could engrave a picture on something, that, that could be cool. I don't know if it would work, though. Tommy says, I got a copper Great Lakes metal wall art that was laser cut. It's boss. See, I think uh, there's some cool stuff there. So, Rome... It's the laser laser pecker two pro. All right, so that's what it's called. So you could take a picture of me and laser engrave it, and then you know you could just hang a picture of me at your house, Rome. Because who wouldn't want that? Who would not want a picture of Ryan hanging on their house? Uh, it's here on Amazon. All right. Do you sell them? Have you sold any of them yet? So because of all my keyboard issues and problems this morning, I did look a little bit at keyboards out on Amazon, and I saw one of the other, so one of the other companies that sells rather high-end keyboards. So in the, in the business world, if you're looking for high-end keyboards and mice, about the only brand that does it is Logitech. They kind of dominate the market of, you know, not entry-level keyboards and mice. Uh, if you want to just upgrade and have something nicer, Logitech is one of the only brands that does it. But there's another brand, Cherry, that they've been doing this for a while. They're not as popular as Logitech, but I do know some people have these Cherry keyboards and they really like them and are fans of them. So this one was on a lightning deal today for $71. You get the wireless keyboard and mouse combo set with it. And uh, it is Bluetooth. So it would not work with my mini PC currently because I'm having some issues with that. But I wanted to put that one out there because uh, anyhow, it's, it's a different brand that makes sort of those high-end keyboards. But I have, I have the Logitech MX Master 3S and the Logitech MX Mechanical. The MX Mechanical, the downfall I see on it is the keys don't light up, which I was, I was a little let down by this and they look like they maybe could but when i was using them they didn't light up but like there's a light on that one that's flashing i don't know i got i need to do some further testing on the keyboards but right now they're not even connected I, I could get them to work with my computer if I just used the Logibolt dongle that comes with it. Then they would connect. I think I can also connect a mouse that way as well. But it's still unfortunate that the Bluetooth on my computer doesn't work because that's how I connect. Uh my headsets and stuff like that. Whew. Okay. But that's enough about keyboards and mice. Rome said, uh, yes, I can make a photo of Ryan. You could, and you could either use it as some wall art or, you know, target practice. <laughs> uh, Rome says it does do stone coasters as well. Ryan, send me your photograph uh, t-shirt and I will try to engrave it on a stone. Who wouldn't like that? 
Tommy says the MX is supposed to, that's what I thought. But yesterday, last night I was using, and maybe this is all tied in with the Bluetooth on my computer may have been going out. Because if you remember like two days ago or three days ago, when I set up the MX mechanical keyboard, I had some problems getting it connected to my computer. And then after I got it connected, my MX mini got disconnected and I couldn't use this one. I don't know if that appeared on the show or if that was after the show that I discovered it, but I had problems connecting the MX mechanical earlier in the week. And it maybe had nothing to do with the MX mechanical. My Bluetooth on my mini PC may have been glitching and ceasing to work. Whereas this morning it was completely not working. All right, Rome, I really actually don't want my face on a stone coaster. So <laughs> we're probably not going to do that. I could put other things on a stone coaster. Because uh, if I had a coaster here in my office, I'd have somewhere to put my hot cocoa, which I drink every day. But I don't think I'd want my face. I don't know what I'd want on a coaster. I don't know. <laughs> Where do you, I have to I have to follow up with this. <laughs> Rome says I will make it. So Rome, can you do you have to buy do they sell special coaster stones? Because I'm guessing you just don't go outside and you know walk around the yard and find some stones and just pick that up and make it a coaster. You probably have to get a flat, thin, like flat, smooth stone of some sort. And <laughs> Do that. I'm just picturing Rome's like out looking in the rock garden at his neighbor's house, just stealing some rocks. I used to make a nice coaster. Uh, uh, yes, you just buy them and then engrave on them. That makes that makes more sense. All right, we are nearly at the end of 2022. There's only a couple days left. I think. I only have one scheduled show remaining this week. Tomorrow morning I will be doing a, a show. I may do some New Year's Eve shows if I'm around and available, which I don't know how much I'm going to be around and available. Anyhow, uh, but if I remember from last year, there was quite a few good sales on New Year's Eve, so I may... You know, try to do some of that and have do some shows on Saturday. So we will see. But anyhow, if you are thinking about getting prepared and getting organized for the new year, I cannot recommend the Rocket Book Everyday Planner right here. It is a great choice of a planner. It allows you to plan your days, your weeks, your months, your entire year inside of here so for example you've got uh monthly planner weeks right there it allows you to plan out the whole month it's got three of those pages in there then it's got weekly plan right there it allows you to plan out your week and what you're going to do for the week it's got i think six of those weekly planner pages in it it also has some checklist pages in it, so you can just use a checklist to keep track of stuff. And then it's got just some lined pages at the end and some dot grid pages to fill stuff in. But yes, it is a great way if you want to keep yourself organized in the new year, try out the Rocketbook Everyday Planner right there. Tommy said, a character of Ryan... Big head, small body, holding a vacuum in one hand, riding a scooter, and in the other hand, shaving. It's gold. <laughs> that would be good. So my wife and I got a caricature done of us. Mm, it was before we had kids, maybe even before we were married. We got it done at an amusement park. So if Dana was still here, it's the amusement park near where he lives, Valley Fair, up in Minnesota. And I think we still have it at our house. I, 
we often said we wanted to get another one done and we just have never done it again. So maybe sometime again, we should get a character done. Part of me thinks I could get one done with my whole family, but that would take forever to sit there and, you know, just get everybody in my family into a character. Uh, that would be, we'd have to sit so long because there's seven of us. Uh, but uh, Emily and I could get one done sometime. I don't know. We'll all have to see if a character company. I don't even know where you get them done anymore. But it would be fun. Rome says, now you have me thinking, Tommy. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Says Tommy. <laughs> Tommy says, Trey, Trey would say, I'll do it for a drone. He probably would. Uh Rome says, maybe I will make Ryan a cutting board. A cutting Because I, I use a cutting board so much. <laughs> I don't use a cutting board much. Oh, but maybe, maybe my wife would like one. She tends to use a cutting board more than I. Like if it was my face and she could, you know, chop things on top of my face. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I can, I get it, Rome. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't sound that doesn't sound healthy, Rome. Uh Tommy says, wait, maybe a charcuterie board. Now that that would be a good idea. A charcuterie board, and the more cheese and crackers you eat, the more of Ryan's face you get to see. That would discourage eating of the charcuterie board, though. Oh, man. Rome said with just the family name. That's maybe a better choice on it. But I, so I can see that. I can actually see that one being kind of cool, Rome. As a just gift for people. Uh, yeah. Putting a family name or, I, so, you know, Ryan and Emily's house or something like that. I, mean, I can I can see that being cool. Rome, pretty, be careful, Rome. Pretty soon you're going to end up, you're going to start building all these, and then you're going to start going to those craft fairs and, you know, craft uh, downtown craft fairs and setting up a booth. And, yeah, you're going to be live streaming from the craft fair. It's going to be Rome, and he's going to be making charcuterie boards live from the craft fair on Amazon. We're going to love it, Rome. Do it. Do it. There you go. All right, other things that are on sale. A lot of these are just items that have been on sale for quite a while, but if you've been on the fence about getting one of these Echo Dot 5th Editions, $39.99 is the price on... <laughs> it's the price. Tell me I saw your comment. All right, we're going to finish this. It's the price on the Echo Show or the Echo Dot 5th Edition right now. If you order it right now from the link in my carousel, you get a free Amazon Basics Smart Light Bulb with it as well. And I can tell you, if you buy the fifth edition without the smart light bulb, you'll still pay the same price. So you really do get a free light bulb with it. So why not? Why not get the free light bulb? Uh, <laughs> there we go. And there are also a bunch of other printers on sale today as well. And so I highlighted those and put those into the carousel. But let me get back up to these. <laughs> Rome says nope not this guy Rome's not joining the craft fair that's what he says now Tommy says crafts craft fairs lead to antiquing just saying that's maybe true I don't know Rome says I know Tommy it's a deep hole that rabbit never gets out says Tommy Richard San Diego says I have two of them they are perfect uh Richard are you talking about these uh, the Echo Dots, they are nice. I just have one of the fifth generations, and I have no complaints about it. I think it works well. So thanks for stopping by. Yeah, Richard said the Echo Dots makes sense. Rome says I know Tommy. After I got this thing, all I see now on YouTube is videos about engraving. There you go. You become an engraving expert. Then it will lead to weekends at Bedford. Tommy, Tommy is, this is what happens when you get old, I guess. 
That's funny. <laughs> All right, three printers. I did want to call out today. The LaserJet M110WE, I got that. It's actually in the box right back over here. The M110WE, if you're looking for a smaller laser jet printer, it only prints in black, so it's not a color printer. But if you only need black and you don't got a lot of desk space or shelf space, the M110WE is a great pick right there. As for other ones, uh, <laughs> here, I'm going to jump back for this, Richard. Richard says, you are also featuring the perfect mouse today. Have not found any better than the MX Master. So I use the MX Master 3 right here, Richard. This is the one I use. Uh, I did get a number of different mice from Logitech to try out. They sent me a couple. They sent me this one, the MX Anywhere, and the MX Vertical. And I tried them all out. I liked the MX Master 3S the most I today. I'm using the M185 with the Logitech MK270 keyboard combo set because the Bluetooth on my computer went out and I just haven't hooked it, the dongle, to get the Master 3S to work. I want to figure out why the Bluetooth isn't working. But Richard, uh, what's in the carousel is the newer Logitech MX Master 3S. And this one's specifically for a Mac, but it works it works just well, just as well on a regular keyboard. I'm I'm not entirely sure what the greatest difference is between the MX Master 3 and the MX Master 3S. I think they just made some mini, minor updates. I think it maybe goes a little bit smoother, but I haven't really tested out the 3S all that much. Richard says, is the MX Mechanical keyboard on the same level? Okay. So, first of all, Richard, the Mechanical keyboard. Uh, are you used to using Mechanical keyboards? Like, Do you come from a gaming background, or are you familiar with them? Because I, I, I'm going to give you my full 100% honest opinion on the MX mechanical keyboard. I do not come from a gaming background. I was not a gamer. My kids are gamers. They, they like gaming and are used to those. Here's what the keyboard looks like. Uh, I was trying it out the last couple of days. I think, actually I don't think, as of right now, the Logitech MX Mini, the MX Keys Mini is the one that I use. This one sits about $99 is the price on this one. This one is every bit at the same level as the mouse. It, it's a fantastic keyboard. I love it. I could not get myself used to it. And I know it's only been a couple of days. I, I was not used to the keys on this. So I did not love it. But I've, I'm not used to that. I felt like I had to press the keys farther than I do on my MX Keys Mini. Like, their keys don't press very far. These ones, you got to press them farther down to get them to work. So I feel like I had to put up more effort to make this work. Plus, I don't, I, I think I would like this in the miniature version where you drop off these keys over here because I think it's too long. But overall, I, I just, I just, Instantly was not as comfortable with the mechanical as I was with the MX keys. But the MX keys is every bit uh, top-notch, high-quality keyboard. And I know that one's not even in the carousel today. Uh, Richard says, uh, yes, he comes from a gaming, but I do not play games, but I like the feel of mechanical no number pad on the mini. Well, on the mini, I the reason it's mini is I don't really like the number pad. And that's another reason why this one has been bothering me the last week is because it's bigger and it's got that number pad, which I don't like. Uh, but the both of them, so the MX Mechanical comes in miniature version like this without the number pad on it. The mini, the MX Mini comes in the MX Keys full size which does include the number pad. So you can get either of them 
in miniature or regular size if you want to. But if you like the if you like the mechanical keys and you're used to that, I think every bit you'd be happy with the MX mechanical. I just I'm not used to the mechanical keys and I don't know being 43 years old switching over to the mechanical keys it, it just it has not been a seamless transition for me this week. And when I get my Bluetooth figured back out or I plug in the dongle for that thing, I'm going to continue testing it out because sometimes it's those things. I do know the Master 3 miles took me a couple days to get used to before I really liked it, and now I'm uncomfortable going to a different mouse. So I do know that sometimes it takes a little while to transition for those. So maybe ask me in two weeks when I've really had a chance to test out the MX Mechanical. Maybe I'll get so used to the buttons, I'll be like, I can't ever imagine not using a mechanical keyboard. But as of today, I would still say the MX Keys Mini from Logitech is the keyboard to beat. Whew. So, sorry Logitech, your MX Mechanical. I think it's a fine keyboard. I think it just, you got to know what you're getting yourself into. If you're not used to the mechanical keyboard, you may not like it. Okay. <laughs> Richard says, I will try out the MX mechanical and let you know. You can swing by the house and I'll just give you that one. You can borrow it for a while. Actually, my son, my oldest son, keeps telling me, asking me when I'm done with it, because I think he wants to, he likes the feel of the key caps on the MX Mechanical, so he wants to take the keys off of it and put them on his keyboard. <laughs> and I keep telling him, mm, it's not quite time for that yet. I'm not ready to let you take that thing apart. Uh, all right, on to other printers, and then I'm probably just going to be about done here. So the... HP Envy Inspire 7958E wireless printer is right here. It is the same printer as the HP 7955E. The only difference is where they were intended to be sold. So right now, if you're going to buy the HP 7958E or HP 7955, which is the next item in the carousel, it's $234.99. You can buy the same printer, but the numbers are 7958E for almost $100 less, $139. So if I provided you no other value today on anything, uh, right now, if you wanted to buy a printer, you could save $100 by just buying the 7958E. It's the same thing, same functionality, same case. The box looks almost identical. Uh, the only difference is the 7958E was intended to be sold at big box stores. And so I think right now they're, they're maybe trying to clear out that inventory. So it has now come, they're selling out the rest of that inventory on Amazon, I believe, and just trying to get rid of it. Maybe to prepare way for another model or something different. Anyhow, you can now buy them on Amazon, but it's the same as the 7955E and almost $100 less expensive. So do that. And I would probably actually recommend right now the 7958E. I use the 7255E most of the time because it's what's set up in my office. But the 7958E is an upgrade over that one. So with the lower price, why wouldn't you do that right now? All right, so that is what's out here. Also, there's a couple of deals, lightning deals on a Felix King office chair. If you're interested in that, check that one out. There's also a lightning deal on a Kurdom office chair and a lightning deal on some bonsai paper shredders. I think this one does 110 sheets, so you can put like a stack of papers in there and it'll pull them through uh, and shred them. It will do... 12 sheets at a time if you just want to manually send them through there. So 
There you have it. It's got wheels on it. This is probably a decent choice or a setup for an office type of setting. Probably not what you need for home users. A lot of time for home users, I say go with an eight or a 10 sheet paper shredder. And for home, home office use, expect to spend, you know, $50 or less for a decent printer or for a decent paper shredder. There's a couple more in my carousel today that that fit that criteria, like the Bonsai 10 sheet is $49.99. The Bonson 8 sheet is $49.99. Both of those would be great choices for home users. Electric razors. And I do got to be done pretty soon because I think I got places to go. So, yeah. Anyhow, some of the electric races, the Braun Series 8, I finally did get that taken out. I even shot a video on it, so that'll be up on my Amazon shop page pretty soon. And there's some other products. But anyhow, that's where I'm going to end the show for today. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks for being here. I consider it a huge honor that people are willing to spend part of their busy lives hanging out with me on the live show here. So thank you so much for that. I don't take that for honor. I will be live again tomorrow morning to do a show. Hopefully I'll have some Bluetooth figured out on my computer or figured something else out because I'm kind of up in the air of what's going on with all that. But thanks everybody. And Tommy says, fantastic live shop and community show today. Thanks, Ryan and friends. You are most welcome. Have a great day, everyone. And goodbye.